Hello, everybody, and welcome to the WLTM show. Definitely not a podcast. Uh, we are going to uh, talk about music, uh, four albums, one picked by each of us. And in the background, you can watch uh, three of us play this very, very fun an amazing video even called 100 was an orange juice which is a very good treat you should buy it live uh, live we're, we're not we're not sponsored but hey orange juice fruit bath factory us. yeah fruit Spon factory. Spon sponsor us uh but yeah so we're gonna talk about four albums let's uh let's do some introductions first yeah that's a good idea since our first episode we'll do some introductions Cruz, you can start all right i'm Cruz. i'm the one recording you're the one seeing the gameplay uh i go to school and uh i love it I love college. Uh, I'm Jack, the guy who did the intro. I don't go to school because school's for lames. Uh, I work at Bojangles. It is bow time every day, as you can tell, because I wear a shirt that says it's bow time. You can definitely see it as I'm speaking about it. Uh, yeah, I'm Jack. Uh, I'm Alex, and thank God it's Friday. <laughs> thank God it is Friday. <laughs> it is definitely Friday. <laughs> Menya Zovut Cameron. <laughs> I'm an actuarial science major, so I'm better than all these other individuals. What a chat. That's all you need to know. All right. So, uh, I think that's just true, honestly. Who, who, anyone want? Do you want to start in particular oh, with so their album? This week we picked four albums, and each of us picked an album, and that's what usually is going to happen. And if someone's absent, I think we're just going to random an album. I think. Yeah, probably. Or have someone pick two. Unless, you know, one of the other boys who are friends with us who would like to pick one at. But uh, that, that'll that be a treat. That'll be a special yeah, treat for something later. like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, don't expect it. Maybe no, for the Christmas it'll be, edition. It'll be a surprise. We'll treat for you. Anyone go first? Who Does anybody want to start? Do we just want to go down the line? All right, Jack wants to start. <laughs> All right, I'll start. I mean, does My, Jack want to start? I, I will Cameron, start. do you want to start? I mean, if if Jack doesn't want to, I will. But All right. Jack, do you want start. to? All right, let's go. I will start. I chose the self-titled debut album of Vampire Weekend. The album called Vampire Weekend. Self-titled debut S album. Slash T. The, the S slash T. Uh, it, it was released in 2008. It's an indie pop rock thing. Uh, so, someone described it as, like, new surf. <laughs> which i i get why they it's so it fucking as, funny i do, i get why you might describe it as new surf but i really dislike that uh yeah. though the album itself very good uh i like a lot oh, we'll discuss whether it's very good uh but i like a lot it's a personal favorite of mine especially in the genre um it's got a really unique sound that combines you know surf rock guitars uh and like some interesting percussion in parts along with like very very quirky lyricism and vocal performance and it's a you know it's a great album in my opinion and uh, i love to hear what you guys think about it that's why i picked it yeah so i had a uh, i had never knew any uh vampire weekend prior to this aside from like you know the smash hits you know i definitely didn't know anything off yeah, this album the, the commercial songs yeah yeah the, the, the la home run the la home run stuff and guy and young the only two, was the only yeah. two uh Vampire um, yeah. but I don't know. I liked it. I thought it was um, I thought it was fascinating. You know, I thought it was neat. I think would be the word I would use to describe it. Mm. It's um, I don't know. I never. I don't really listen to a lot of music like this. A lot of this uh, I don't know. Something I would say female music. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the, uh, the, the, I, spend, I, I spend six that. hours a day on Tumblr and Ezra, Ezra Koenig is, my, is daddy type music. But I don't think that's a bad thing. They call like, him Ezra Koenig for a reason. But... I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Baboom. I like the... Uh, <laughs> I like that it's like neo baroque pop. You know, it's like some Beach Boys type stuff. If the Beach Boys yeah, new surf. were still twenty, yeah, new, new surf. surf. And I like that they use uh, like every instrument. You know, yeah. There's a lot. Have... There's a lot that I don't like about it, but I like that. Mm. My favorite song on the album is the second to last track, Walcott. Yeah, that's good. Oh, that's a, and Oxford Comma is pretty good too, because you don't really don't give a fuck about Oxford Comma. That's Oxford Comma has been traditionally my favorite of the album. 
I have like I like a lot. I put it on a playlist. It's uh, it's very catchy. I like I like the lyrics. I'll say yeah. I think the lyrics are they're too abstract for my feeble mind sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I respect that. You know he's out here. Yeah, I think that's really all we can ask for from a guy who's making music. Your brain's too small for the concept of uh, standing corrected, and uh, Blake getting pra- plastic surgery and uh, other such uh, complex topics. Especially when the songs don't sound that great, sometimes it's hard for me to listen. <laughs> There's only a couple of those. Fucking true that. I uh, what, I up? I usually listen to this kind of stuff. Well, not anymore, but. The, the, these guys are in the vein of like pop punk or like pop rock like mm-hmm. in, in the middle of that which is like in the striking zone of just me listening to it over and over again which is it's fine but like I, I really liked Walcott and Oxford comma but the other ones were just either just decent it's it's not something I'm like yes give me the album like if i made a playlist i would like sprinkle the the bops like in and out because i think this is more of like a a song band than like just all in a row just that is how i feel about their other albums i the other two albums of theirs have some great songs ones that i feel like are just as good if not better than the ones on this album but uh i don't i think those albums are a lot less consistent which is why I picked this one. Uh, this is my favorite of theirs. Uh, like, yeah, they uh, they have historically had like you know one or two songs that on their albums that like really pop off like as singles, and then there are ones that are like you know people just like them, right? So like you know you hear songs like A Punk and Campus and in, in like normie TV commercials a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're good songs, and I don't, I, I don't begrudge them for getting money, but uh, it's can, it can be kind of annoying, especially when like, Holiday off their second album was on was in like, four billion commercials in like one year, and so it was very unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I, I actually, you know, I used to feel very similarly about this album where I was like, you know, I, I loved Oxford Comma and Campus and, like Walcott, and I was like. I'd listen to those few songs and skip the rest, but then I more recently I sort of listened to it all the way through, and I've, you know, got, I've gotten a taste for the other ones a lot. Um, yeah, I, I, definitely... I feel the only the only song that still to me is like I could do without this is I Stand Corrected. I don't feel like it fits much on the album. Uh, doesn't stand out in terms of like it doesn't have it's not nearly as quirky or out there. Which I guess is a change of pace, but I don't like it. I don't like it that much. But otherwise, but, I, I feel like the song is the, the album's primo. So. To me, this certainly uh, got a little less bad um, over time. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say this, this album's a grower, not a shower. I, I should say, not less bad, less uh, disappointing. Because <laughs> you know, I, I've heard like songs from the Vampire Weekend before, obviously. The like the creative genius behind Pizza Party by La Home Run, <laughs> like can't can't make bad music, right? That, I mean that's what I went into this thinking, right? I think that's worthy um, of so much note. I I had an incorrect um incorrect Assumption. thought process going. I was a little too um optimistic, you know. Yeah, this is compared to compared to that abstract piece of art. This is normie shit. This also um falls into the category of shit that like is it. Is in roughly the same genre as Modest Mouse, but isn't Modest Mouse, which means it's probably bad, um, <laughs> or at least I, I'm gonna think it's it, worse. Is it? I don't know what genre are Mouse. you talking about? Like, <laughs> is, the the fake, I'm, I'm speaking of the fake genre, the ultimate fake genre of alt slash indie rock. Alt rock, independent <laughs> yes. rock. Oh, the fake. Oh, okay, the umbrella indie rock. I got you. Okay. Got yeah. It. So basically, since anything in the, you know the the legendary fake genre that isn't modest mouse, I just automatically think is worse. Um, this falls in that category, obviously. So I just think it's worse. I liked Walcott, and I thought Blake's got a new face was interesting because he tried to make a Caribbean song. Uh, it worked out all right. Um, I mean, and. Um, Oxford commas are lit, so I think this nigga's Hayden, but I don't remember the lyrics very well. I mean, the 
all the lyrics songs for Kamen are just like gibberish, kind of. It's like, like it's just it's what none, you of them, mean, yeah. none of the none of the lines like actually relate to each other, and then there's just like in the chorus, it's just like oh, he just shouts out Little John, and it's like okay. But that's why it's called Oxford John. comma. That's the metaphor. Uh huh. Because the Oxford comma is there to put things together that don't really relate. Sure. <laughs> I mean, you could say that's what it's there for. I'll be honest. I slept, <laughs> I slept a lot of English class. That's, that's not exactly what the Oxford comma is there. I for don't even know what an Oxford thing. comma is. An Oxford comma is the comma. If you if you list like three things, is you have a blank, blank, and a blank. The, the Oxford comma is the one before the and. It's optional. Mm-hmm. Oh, some some people like it, some people don't. I'm a fan of it myself. I I also am a fan of it because there's the the famous example of like the strippers JFK and Hitler, and it's like oh if you don't have the extra comma it sounds like JFK and Hitler are strippers. are strippers, and if you have it it's like oh they are strippers and then there is also JFK and Hitler, which is a wild ass party, but you know. <laughs> yeah, but a party that nonetheless has so is end, JFK you know? and Hitler being strippers a bad thing? Is that the wrong well, timeline? It, 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 it's <laughs> it, it might it's not like be. The oh, it's confusing. Timeline. So okay, yeah. that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, like the let's, is... it's like the let's eat grandma thing. Oh, I love but that. But there one. are examples that um like so like support not having the Oxford comma. There's there's examples where the Oxford comma itself is ambiguous. I can't think of any right now. Yeah, so it is, it, is, it is a situational thing. Yeah, I guess. It's like the stripper is candy and misty. It's like, so is candy a stripper or is candy like the noun, you know? Depends on where you put that comma. Got it. The Oxford comma? The Oxford comma. It's a British comma. I also oh. hate that the name of this band is Vampire Weekend. Because, like, why? Uh, the, I'm pretty sure I have a theory. Weekend. No Vampire Weekend? Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, how many monthly listeners? Like 3.1 million? That's reduced by like, like below two at least. If they're just not named Vampire Weekend, but you think so? Yeah, really? Yeah, I really do. I really do. I they they still be popular, but not as just just with that title. Interesting. Theory. I really do think so. I definitely think that you know, the name's like it's there to to you got to have a name that makes people want to come back. But I don't yeah. know if I would say that. Vampire it's really a name that makes people back. come back. Really? really? The females. The females. Oh my god. This Vampire Week, like, I'd never even thought about the name. Like, in any <laughs> sense, like, it's just like being just gibberish. It's like, something, name. something I would make up just to fucking troll or something. Like, yeah, like they make up an excuse as to why you can't never, go to school. I never thought of it, but it is possible that, you know, the fucking edgy teenager girls who like, you know, Twilight and True Blood are like, vampires. And they listen to it. But it's 2008. It is. Yeah, 2008 was, yeah, yeah, it doesn't when that matter. Shit was starting, I guess. Oh, um, 08, I think Twilight, I think the first mo mo Twilight movie came out when I was in the 6th grade. 07? My sister was a big fan. 6th oh, 10, 10. grade was 09. Um, well, when did the first Twilight movie come out? I, I'm, not a, I'm not a female, sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm Googling it. November 21st, 2008. So I would have been okay. 10, so that would have been the 5th grade. But, yeah, you can say that, okay, it probably right. there's a chance that that influences in terms of, like, especially with the later stuff, but I, I think the, uh, it's, it's for, I think, if I remember correctly, the story behind the name is that uh, Mr. Ezra Coing uh, was... Is that uh, how it's pronounced? I don't know. That's just how it seems like it should be pronounced to me, even though it's an IG and not ING, but who who cares honestly? Uh, apparently, while I'm he was pretty sure the OE in German's an A. I think it's actually like Kenning or something. But I we're not linguists. Kenning. Or I'm not, right? a I'm not a Kenning I'm not sounds a right. But anyway, apparently, when he was in, I think when he was in college, he was like making working on a uh, independent film that was about vampires chasing people. And uh, that's actually the plot of the song Walcott, when he's saying, when he's telling them, hey, there's people who, who prey on human life, and you should leave Cape Cod. It was because the, the movie he was making that was called Vampire Weekend was about uh, a guy named Walcott being chased by vampires in Cape Cod. Uh, gotcha. Was it during the weekend? It was during the weekend, apparently. Um, Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> 
For, for, for future references, not Friday. <laughs> for the viewers out there. Hey, it's Friday somewhere. It, yeah, it's Friday. Thank it's God Friday, Friday is a state of mind. <laughs> it's not Friday okay. is a state of mind. No, thank God it's Friday is a state of mind. <laughs> but I, I will say that not the worst album in the podcast this week. <laughs> I agree with that one. Damn. <laughs> That, that can that can be that can be thrown at all of the albums, <laughs> which is my favorite part. I'll keep it four hundred thousand oh. with you. It's it's oh my god! Oh, hey, I'm in agreement that uh that Walcott's the best song on the album though. I'm glad I'm not uh, in that, uh, in that theory. Yeah, either that or uh, Oxford comma, but it's a, it's a close one. What is a Colossa? It's uh, African what... something. It's like African music, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's that's another thing. The album does, you know, Cameron mentioned when he was about Blake's got a new face that it sounds like it has like it, it, trying to make a Caribbean song, but there's actually like a lot of stuff on the album that's like very uh trying to take African rhythms. It, it yeah. literally yeah. sounds it. like it. Literally, what it actually sounds like. I thought this when I was listening to. I forgot. It sounds like like he's studying music <laughs> in college and he's just trying shit out. Yeah, like, which is which... not in class. Interesting. Interestingly, is kind of the you know like the this is kind of this is a rehash of the Baroque pop formula of like the Beach Boys, Beatles, that sort of like early of that stuff, and a lot of that um, yeah, as just, it got older and older was getting into like these more worldly you know African uh, Latin American yeah, type like, beats. You had uh, the you know the Beatles, the Beatles doing the shit where they would just like they went to India and they were like the sitar. Really- they were really, really cool. We're, we went to India, and they came back, and they made a bunch of music that was that sounded like it was from India. Do y'all, y'all not remember Van Dyke Parks Discover America? And yet, there's Van Dyke mm. Parks Discover America. Very, yeah. very good album. Very Van Dyke Parks did it better, but Van Dyke Park was actually like a it's man a, of the culture. Yeah. So. Also, the man of the the super, no, was it the Incredible Toaster fame? Yeah. <laughs> and Van Dyke Parks wasn't named after it wasn't named in order to attract teenage girl followers in his band. <laughs> That's his real name. Do you know that? Yeah. I follow maybe, him on maybe, Twitter. Maybe this guy's real name is Vampire Weekend. Let's look at this Van Dyke is like a last name. I think like, his real name is Ezra Kinnig. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, Ezra Kinnig. We've already been over that. Wait. Well, Wait, it's all coming together. His real name is Vampire Weekend. Is Vampire Weekend so, an, like a, ac- not an acronym, a uh, anagram of Ezra Kinnig? No, it's not. There is no Z. <laughs> Alright, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's no Z. There's, oh, there is a K. <laughs> there's way too many E's. I think one thing we can 100% take away from this, though, yes. is that this is Jack music. No, oh, really? It's. I guess it's, I. It's, I, 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 I feel like I expect Jack. Jack to listen to anything I don't like. So like <laughs> it, it is Jack music. Bro. Jack music if he just turned off all the electronic sounds. I'm I'm trying to like y'all talking about how you don't like it, and I'm like I'm trying to find things. That's not that like. I don't like. I gave it a six. No, I'm I'm it's a positive like, I score. feel like I don't like it, but I also just don't care if I don't like it. You know? Yeah. yeah you don't it, like it just it, for me, track. like it was just like whatever, and like it it, it wasn't bad. It was just like this yeah. is. I'll, I'll give an example. The only reason I ever listened to the 1975 debut album was because a female recommended it to me, and I was trying to get it in. I feel like the only reason I would listen to this album. Would be something like that. Dude, I'm surprised. Hey, like, the 1975 so debut ways. album isn't even bad. Add me. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, w- I was introduced to this album by my gay brother. As and a, see as, that, as, that as a lot of a my lot. music taste has been introduced to me by my gay brother. So yes. Yeah, a lot of your other is... tastes too. <laughs> Whoa, Nelly. Fucking <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all gonna be all right? I'm just, I'm just kidding. All right, who's traps? Never mind. Uh, what, they, what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, we're not supposed to talk about the game. <laughs> <laughs> I have star blasting light in my hand, so I want to make some <laughs> inquisitions. But never mind. Uh, so, final final thought. This is the the second best thing Ezra Kinnick has made behind Neo Yokio. Neo Yokio is so good. <laughs> it's actually ridiculous. <laughs> I it's, forgot he worked on Neo that. Neo Yokio is like it's it's a it's it's like the tr- it's like the quadrality of man. Like it's it's on another level. 
<laughs> the quadrality of man. The CPU. We are trying. beyond duality. We are beyond oh, tritality. Yeah. Yeah, we are tritality. Let's <laughs> wait till we get to pentality. <laughs> it, it, then like, it's it, over it, for you, Aceus. It just like it transcends all of like everything. Like it, it, it's awesome. a joke in itself, and it knows it. But that it also takes itself seriously, and Jaden Smith is in it. Like you can't get Jaden Smith is Jaden Smith in that. Anime. <laughs> it's so good. It's actually worth Whoa. it. So it's worth the watch. Yeah. So uh, final thoughts. Recommend we recommend watching Mio Yokio. Thank you yeah, for uh, joining us for this uh, anime seen podcast. I respect it. <laughs> I think you'd respect it more if you so- fucking saw it. <laughs> shit's, shit's way too funny <laughs> it's actually a meme in anime form yeah low, low iq niggas like see things like that and they're unable to like know what a joke is so but that's that's really their they loss. funded it who funded the joke who funded the million dollar joke it was probably, High IQ it was probably jaden smith it was it, it was, was netflix pro- right I'm sorry. Yeah, I think it was, it was Netflix. Netflix. It was Netflix show. Oh, I thought you said Death Grips. I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> save it for the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I recently learned something very uh, important about uh, Zach Hill and the band Waves, but that I didn't know before. But that's a story for another time. All right. Well, I'd like to hear that story another time. All right. But overall, Vampire Weekend self-titled a six out of ten. You you really like gratings, don't you? I I got to. <laughs> oh, he has he has an Excel file. I have a spreadsheet. Yeah. And I and it, you know if I don't give it the rating it deserves, how am I, how are you gonna know if it's worth listening to? That's really the only thing he's spreading. <laughs> Wait, he's yeah. not he's not spreading for your boys. Not, no, I'm not spreading any cheeks either. <laughs> leads me to my nice boss too. <laughs> leads me to my album this week, which is a. Uh, <laughs> Gregory Allen Isakov's That Sea the Gambler, which is a uh, indie folk album, came out in 2007, written by a uh, a farmer turned folk musician in Colorado, and um, I discovered this album via, I think I got it via Spotify to Discover Weekly. I think the first song I ever heard off here was either John Brown's Body or, um, like Stable Song maybe. Uh, I'm I'm the I'm into folk music. You know, it's kind of my, it's it's something I take a I have a lot of uh, interest in, and I like listening to a lot. And um, I know that out of the other three of you here, um, that's not something that you guys are as into, or maybe just as exposed to. So um, I'd be very interested to hear what you guys thought, coming from uh, the view of people who don't listen to this type of stuff, maybe as much as I do. I right, so. Okay, it's, else not, <laughs> it, it's, it's not like I hate all indie folk, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're, start, we're starting uh, off strong. We're starting off this indie strong. folk that I like, it, it for, exists. For example? Yeah, what's your... What's, what's, Crime Hank and okay. Soko and uh, Gregory and the Hawk. That, that's all yeah. I can think of. Alright. Fair enough. So I, I don't... You've only heard of, of one of those, I think, like... Pretty much. I've heard of all of those. I've been listening to all You've of them. You've heard of all of them. You've only yeah. listened to like one or zero. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not exclude Mount Erie from that list. Oh, shit. I forgot Mount Erie. The, the quadrilogy of indie folk that I enjoy. Okay. The quadrilogy. So, like, it's not like I hate, despise the whole genre, you know? Mm-hmm. But it's I put just this one on. you despise. <laughs> I put this on. First 30 seconds, I already knew I wasn't going to like any of this. <laughs> Which was untrue because I like two songs, okay? But I, I, I have a confession. I, when I say I tried, I mean I tried to listen to the album. I did not succeed because this shit was mad boring. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I, what I did, I put on every song for one minute. And if I didn't like the song, I realized that nothing was going to happen in the next four to one minutes of the rest of the song that was going to make me like it. Because that's just, like, not what this type of music is doing. Like, it's not like it's going to be some wild-ass chord change mm-hmm. or anything like that. That's just, like, not what it is, right? 
Mm-hmm. There's oh. not going to be any incredible rap beats to back up everything. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so much hostility. <laughs> In, in, so, in, defense, in defense of Cameron, to the listeners at home, if I was expecting anybody <laughs> to hate this with a passion, it was going to be Cameron from the start. <laughs> so, in his there, ended, there ended up being two songs that Wait, I enjoyed. Which were? Those being San Francisco and Salt in the Sea, coincidentally right next to each other. Okay, so you were more of a fan of the not folk songs. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Cameron... <laughs> Killing the competition. Salt in the Sea certainly wasn't a folk song, but I didn't recognize this San Francisco as not a folk song. Um, Co- coincidentally, those were the two songs I also liked the most. <laughs> there you fucking go. Anyways, this man's singing was boring. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I knew enough about acoustic guitar to know if there's some difference between what this dude in Sun Kill Moon does versus like what the four indie folk people that I like do. One big difference between this guy. There might just be some fundamental difference with what they're doing. One big difference between this guy and Sun Kill Moon is that this guy sings. Yeah, he he doesn't, he doesn't, it's it's called spoken word, Cameron. Yeah, he doesn't record his own podcast and put it over music like Sun Kill Moon does. (laughs) (laughs) Just like uh, Mark Hoslick's new solo rap album. album. He doesn't make high tracks. Uh, but also, uh, this guy plays guitar way less good than Mark Kozlik does. Mark Kozlik is actually a madman. I think there's also less... There's nothing like... He's not trying to play the guitar real good. Yeah. He's not trying to do any yeah, wild... It's not his point. You know? Yeah. He's there for the culture. He's there for the culture. I, uh, I, I, I can't say like I really like the album, but I, I did. Like I, uh, Well, compared to Cameron, I fucking loved it. Because I, yeah. I I listened to every song and I enjoyed an I enjoyed here. most of them, like the only ones I really didn't remember is like all there is and black and blue. Like the rest were like some fucking bops, like unrideable girl, uh, salt in the sea. That's that's a, that's a that's a real fucking good song. Three a.m. The sea, the gambler, raising cane. Oof, man, that's this album is actually really good. And what's what, your what do you think about it from the perspective of somebody who owns a guitar? Um, he's fine. He's he's not he's he's not like oh I'm gonna I'm gonna download his song off Rocksmith and be like okay it's fucking it's unrideable girl time baby. You're like, not googling the tabs. Oh yeah, I've uh, yeah I'm not googling the tabs like I did for Alice Son. So uh, there this. I, I, <laughs> No, it's not intended, but the, I love the little bit of shade and saying, as someone who owns a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't, wasn't going to comment. I wasn't going to comment, but it certainly sounded like shade. It was pretty good, if it was also, intentional. Also, when, the, I, when, I, when, I, when I listened to this album, I didn't look at any of the titles while I was listening to it, except for when I heard uh, Salt in the Sea, which I, I pulled my phone in the pocket at work, and I looked at it, I was like, I'm going to remember this one, because this, this is good. But, uh, so, having not looked at the titles, when Cruz said, unwritable girl, I thought, I thought, he sounded like, unrideable girl, yeah, and I'm yeah, like, same. damn, is he writing this song about how, <laughs> you go Yeah, I know, I know a couple of those. <laughs> go and let him smash. <laughs> for a very different reason. But, uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm kind of in a, in a similar boat to Cameron, not nearly, not nearly as harshly negative. Because I did listen to the entire thing, and I I did not actively dislike it, but not really the kind of thing I would ever act spend my time listening to, except for the solvency, which I, I'm gonna fucking say that one because that's a bop. Um, yeah, not really my cup of tea. I think you knew that already. Yeah, uh, this wasn't um, a Tumblr album. What a oh, uh, <laughs> Alex. What a, there was a there was a song that had a violin that come came in. Was that a which song was that? The violin? Yeah, he, there's a... Oh, is, I think is, it might have... Is it that C? Or... Oh, no, yeah, it might, it might be, if I'm thinking of the one you're thinking of. I know it's, I know it's near the end. Because that's a, that's a Sun Kill Moon-esque thing to do also. Is to yeah. have a guitar and then have a violin come in, like, later. So... I think it's one... It's near the end, I know that much. Because the thing is, I actually only... I I'm more inclined to listen to full albums of this man and some of his other stuff rather than this one. 
Because okay. what my goal was, I wanted to, I wanted to pick. I knew I wanted to pick a folk album, and I wanted oh. to pick something that was that Cameron would hate. I wanted to pick something that was a length that I could fit in here without without it just being the obvious long one. And I felt like this was the most accessible. And I already knew that Cameron hates Sun Kill Moon with a burning passion. So right. I wasn't hey, to, I know. I wasn't gonna flip anything Wait, like Cameron, that. Cameron, you don't like Sun Kill Moon? What the fuck? Well, I tried listening to Ghost in the Great Highway. That shit was boring. And uh, yeah. Like I said, there's no there's no banger beats on those albums. <laughs> 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 but I think you know, I just wanted to bring something a little different. I know that I'm pretty much the only one that gives a shit about folk music. Oh, Cruz likes folk music. But in a, we're in different capacities. Hell yeah! And, I like um, folk music. Uh-huh. You, like, you like music for the folks, you know? <laughs> for the culture. <laughs> and um, Shade is the same. I think that if I were to make a chart, like a you know, like a, a diagram of like you know entry level to like you know god brain level stuff, I think this would be mm-hmm. definitely in the entry level column. There's nothing too USD crazy or anything about this. Yeah, exactly. Why did you give us an entry level folk when you can you can shine your heavenly folk light you can, into you our can eyes? Force us you can yeah, why, your power why, why do you open like the shitty cracked door and not the one that's made out of gold, like folk because gold, I, like guitar I, I, strings? I, I thought and... that if I did that, I would get the reaction that Cameron gave to this one. But I'm, I should have just gone. I should have. I'm pretty sure he for, had that reaction well, because it's not interesting and not because I it's almost bad. Think he got the reaction because I picked it. No. No, it, on, if I'm you gave me some God Brain shit, like, I, there's definitely a higher chance of me liking it. Well, I should have picked, picked my favorite would folk usually album, imply interesting. I should have picked Major Organ and the Adding Machine self-title. Oh, yeah, you should have. That would have that been... That's my favorite folk album. Yeah, yeah same. That one. Hall of <laughs> Cruise. But my personal favorite song off the album is 3AM, because I like I like the part where it's Sad Boy Hours. Oh, hell yeah. 3 which is, which is really the vibe of a lot of, a lot of this music. But... Do you know what kind of farmer he was? Was he a soy he, he farmer? Grew... It said yeah. he was a horticulturalist. <laughs> yeah, he was a horticulturalist, which means that he grows horticultures. Um, he, he... But like, like, so he he has like the bony bear formula, where it's like I'm in a shack and this is where I report Subspeed. stuff. That's what they. That's what Neutral Milk or Jeff that, Mangum that, did. That not that's what everybody who makes good music does. I'm pretty sure that's just, yeah. I think good music. Because well, what, what he does is he has his his shed, like tool shed type thing on his farm, that has all the stuff in it, and then it's like, you know, when he's when it's not growing season, he goes in there and records and stuff. Wait, that's so awesome, actually. Yeah, that's why he, his albums come out a few years apart. He just released his first album of new material in three years or four years, maybe four or five years. Um, just released it a couple days ago. I've been listening to that a little bit. I like it a lot. All right, maybe next week we'll listen to that one. Yeah, probably not. I, <laughs> like, like, even, even though it was like a good album, like doing the same artist two weeks in a row is uh, pretty yikes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that didn't end well yeah, the last that, time. That, you did never, it. never happened. <laughs> no, that's redacted. What do you mean the last time? <laughs> right. We didn't do a. We yeah. didn't just yeah. do a podcast yeah, this is... or anything. We would never do a podcast. This is a show. Yeah, this is a this is a station. This is WLTM. WLTM. <laughs> yes. We uh, we are professionals here. We're not some dumb podcast meme shit. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm an, an official meme. radio DJ. Mm-hmm. Is that disc jockey? You are? <laughs> I go. I guess that is what you are. Yeah. Now that I think about it. And unless anybody else has any other closing comments, I'd just like to say thank you for listening to my album. Also, the album art. Nice. Did he draw that on the farm too? I don't. I don't think he. I think he has like a um, like a hypnosis type guy that does his album art, if I remember correctly. Like a, you know how Pink Floyd had their guy who did all the album art. I think he's got something like that. I thought that was like Thomas Lightning or something. Tom, uh, who did the, he, he was Storm the, Torgerson. Storm Torgerson. Yeah, he he's the one who did the. As opposed to Thomas. Yeah, you were almost close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the clues. I gave you the breadcrumbs, and you're like, yeah. Or well, you already knew the you. answer, probably. So. I was gonna say thank you for the clues that I already knew. <laughs> So uh, yeah, Gregory Allen Ostikov. All right, let's 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 go to my album. It's um, yes, please. Asuka, let's save the best for last. Asuka by Free Parking! <laughs> exclamation point. All right, so I picked this album knowing it was gonna hurt to listen to. It's <laughs> okay. I. It hurts me every time to listen to it, and I love it. It's just it's just like in the airplane over the sea. 
it's in the airplane over the sea, but for waifus. Shitty waifus. That's a way to put it. Would you care to elaborate? He talks about his his profound love for Asuka. Alright? From Neon uh, Genesis. I didn't, I didn't pick that one up. Avon Avon <laughs> uh jellyfish. Oh, is that what he's actually doing this he, whole time? He's, well, yeah, he talks about okay. how if you have wings, you should use them. And, like, every ev- every song is about either an anime girl or how he liked to play video games in his youth. And he just he just doesn't he, anymore. I, I picked that part up. Well, so I, this I, really I, is just the album for Cruise, then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I, I knew as soon as I saw the title, I was like, fuck, why are we listening to albums titles in Ava reference? Because, like, I, I wasn't sure whether the album was going to be, like, you know? Not, even when I was listening, I wasn't sure. Because, you know, I feel like a while since I watched that thing. I watched that thing when I was, like, an edgy 13-year-old. And I, so what, last year? I've forgotten everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. I was I'm born in 2004. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I, I, it's, you know, the only thing I remember, though, the damn show is the memes. So, uh... <laughs> uh so I wasn't gonna get any references if there actually were actual references. There's so there's not actual references. Okay. He, it's all, the he, all he does, yeah. It, it's oh my god. It's he just if you know it, it doesn't really. I guess if you do know the source material, you're like yeah, like you can envision stuff more. But I I kind of went in the mindset of like he's singing about something he can never love but love so much like. How Jeff Magnum screams about how he loves Anne Frank, but she's dead, <laughs> and how how this his man loves Asuka, but she's she does she's so, not like, real. She's she's like basically dead. Like when you uh, mentioned uh, that it was like neutral milk hotel, you just meant lyrically. Yeah. Okay. I, I was oh like, yeah, it's not. It's not we were in a fucking okay, <laughs> different. That's dimension. definitely not in terms of quality. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you that I think the other 816 people who listen to this album monthly might uh. <laughs> I have something to say about that. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was about to ask about that. I, I, I saw less than a thousand plays on all of the songs. Hell yeah. And uh, there's there, there's a story behind this, right? How where how do you find this? Can I tell the story? What? Uh, what? No, I mean, Cruz, I, I, Cruz was walking to school one day, and there was a cassette <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> okay, and, okay, okay. It says, "Listen to me, please," and it's like got five dollars inside. And it was just, it was just this. <laughs> No, oh, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's not the story. But, but really, they're, they're like, how would you find this thing? I've never. I, uh... Yeah, actually, how did you oh, locate no this? No one's listened to <laughs> so this. this. No one has listened to this ever. Okay, so Whatever. the first time I ever listened to this was on Bandcamp, and it's not. It's not that I'm a Bandcamp god, but um, <laughs> it. I think I, I saw it, on a chart. Someone had it on their chart, and it yeah, was it's... the the original version. It wasn't um rebuild. Um, because I don't, rebuild either they re-recorded it or they nah, just sure. just re re-released it without uh, Asuka on it, so they could put oh, it on like, digital platforms oh. like Spotify. All right, because these aren't the same people who made the anime. No, this is not. Um, this is not Satoru Yuwata. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, and then I I listened to it. And uh, I love every monster. I think that song just fucking just really kills it. And then my, every time I listen to My Girlfriend as a song. Robot, I think about Sabrina the Teenage that's, Robot. That song's trash. Uh, so, no, is you mean my, my Life as a Teenage Robot? Yeah, My robot. Life as a Teenage Robot. Sabrina was not a Teenage Robot. XJ9, a.k.a. Jenny Wakeman, for those of you keeping school at home. I literally can't, I can't not think of that show and like of her and how he's singing about her. Like, it's Do you just... know he's singing about her in particular? No. But I'm but pretty that's... sure he is. There's no way he's not. Like, yeah. well, to me, it doesn't matter. It's all Like, if he is or not, you know? It, it's it's what you take it as. It's... it's That's it's, kind of it, beautiful. It's just like all music. Like, it can have meaning or it, it can't. Like, it doesn't matter. As long as you like it. And I'll say, we, we've definitely got the mix between music that has meaning and music that doesn't in this selection. Damn, the I like this album. Yeah. This album wasn't even bad. I didn't catch the 
the subtle anime references, if I'm 100% honest. I thought this was just like Remo Drive cover band type stuff. It's just some emo music. But I liked it. The song White Flag, that song slaps into the ether. So does Life on Earth. My Girlfriend's a Robot was, um, I also thought about My Life as a Teenage Robot, but I think that's only because Cruz has mentioned that before. But I uh, mentions that a lot. Yeah. I think about this album a lot. I'm sitting there and I'm like, there's people out there that are making music for 116 people. And just, you know, they're out here. If it's 116, it went up. I think yeah, and uh, these, are, uh, these guys also dropped an album this week. I think um, another thing is that I, I like it because this is the kind of stuff I would like to make. I would like to make ridiculous songs about nothing that just, that means something to maybe me, but that's it. Like, I don't know, I just, oh, yeah. it, it's just like, I don't know, a love story. It's just like writing love songs, but not about the girl who dumped you. It's about a girl who can never dump you. Who can never dump you because you're never dating. Because she's, she's either dead or doesn't exist. Like I have to say, when I nut to anime, I feel a lot less guilty because like it's impossible for me to fuck the, the, the anime bitch. No matter what I do in my entire life, it doesn't matter. Your, and it's not someone's know. daughter. Also, is your usual? Oh, that that does not go then. through my mind. Oh, okay. well, <laughs> that's tough. Yeah, that's, I know this is unrelated. Kinda... This is unrelated to the musical content. But is your first emotion after nutting always shame? <laughs> uh, no, no, not if it's hentai or <laughs> oh, only, or, only not if it's hentai or if it's uh, trannies. Trannies. <laughs> Or, or if it's interracial, oh, yeah. then I'm just watching my niggas put in work. <laughs> but, but, but if it, if it doesn't, if it doesn't like, if it doesn't fall into any of those, then probably like it might be some form of shame or like, wow, I just wasted thirty minutes of my life. It, thirty about, minutes, wow. Yeah. Well, ladies, he's single. Or sometimes I'm like an hour, and ninety minutes. I do long nuts, like I'm marathoning. You know, I'm practicing for the future. You, I'm like, y'all, do you know? edge? What? Yeah, yeah, I edge and then I stop and then, like, I come back to it. What are we talking about? I I heard that John Lennon wrote Dreamer when he was edging. (laughs) Speaking of John Lennon, when's he going to release a new album? Yeah, what the fuck is up? John Lennon's last album is a fucking slap. Why is he releasing a new one? You probably come out with some real firepower, you know, for his next project. Yeah, like, uh, just like, uh, Judas Priest did. Hell yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I like that sound that Judas Priest did. I can't wait for the Lil Peep John Lennon collab. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if we were alive. <laughs> That's a wild time. <laughs> right, That's Cameron, what you. Cameron, what did you think about the album? <laughs> so, so like every monster came on, I was like, damn. Damn, this nigga's edgy, but you know, the song is same, edgy. Same. And, and then Life on Earth came on, and it's like, damn, this nigga can like write choruses relatively well. And and then My Girlfriend is a Robot came on, that shit was trash. And then I, I don't remember the next two songs. And then Ghost and Child was a banger. Um, Ghost and Child was like, um, lyrically very similar to Hollow 1945. It had the same flow, for lack of a better term. Uh, you'd have to listen to that and listen to this, like... Of course back, you would use the word like, flow. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, the, I know, but, like, I can't think of, like, a better word, unfortunately. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Exactly. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I like that song, too. And then, um... I don't remember the other songs. But, uh, I don't remember them sucking, but I'll probably never listen to them again. Um... Well, I'm glad you put in so, them. I'm glad you yeah, put in well, be- Better than that, see, the... That C, the gambler out of 10, although that C is indeed a gambler. So maybe that album's a little more truthful. That's um, true. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I got to say. Um, I'm sure you 170 are. monthly listeners on Spotify out of 10. <laughs> that's how I mean. I, hey, what I'm did sure you think, Jay? Yeah, Jack. I'm, sure I'm sure you already realized the, the shade I've been throwing, but... Uh was not a big fan uh right. as soon like like cameron the first song came on and i heard him say this shit about like hating everybody i'm like damn this guy's edgy <laughs> no <laughs> like, i like the like, edgy though you're a hater oh no i mean that some of the some of the, like the edgy lyrics in particular were more clever than all the other ones um there's there so so like okay i found the instrumentals pretty uh not enticing they weren't bad they they were performed 
decently, but there, were, there wasn't a, really much interesting going on the instrumental. So it's obvious that like the focus is on you know the guy singing and the lyrics and the emotion and yada yada. He uh he sounds good. He's a good singer. Some of those drum rolls um, are sick. I wasn't really paying attention to drums. I should, maybe, maybe if I ever listen You're to this sleeping? album again, uh, I will uh, pay more I attention. I think you listen to any album again, maybe drum. if we're paying attention to the sound. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever listen to this album again, I will pay more attention to the drum fills. But uh, the mm. uh, singer is, he's good. He's He's got like an impressive voice, and a good range. There, there's like There's like one line... I don't remember what song it is, it, but uh, that like encapsulated what I did not like about his vocal performance. And it's like it's in like the chorus of one of the songs, and he's just singing it like a normal register. And there's like in one of the words, he just shoots up real high, and it sounds. And it's, and it's like it's an impressive like reach, but it does not sound good as part of the chorus. And like, I felt like his performance in a lot of places was like that, where it's like he's sounding impressive but not sounding good. Uh, is it I Hate Vampires? I think. That song is definitely the worst song in the album. I think if I had any criticism, I think you should either take it off or, I don't know. I, 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 I either go from, it's like a, it's like a 20% chance that I'll actually enjoy the song. And most of the time it's just like, man, I hate this song. Please just shut up. But it's, it's like a lot, like. I noticed it consistently throughout the album. There was that one, was one like specific song that like encapsulated. This is just something I can describe where it's like, "Ooh, that is it. I do not like that." But um, it on the other songs, he, his performance was similar. Where it's like, it's just he's. There's parts where he's like over the top for no reason. But I think and, that. He's, okay, I wait, think that's part wait, of it, you know. There was, I mean, it does it does add kind of to the the emotion of it, I guess. But there's it's like there's the musical this, theater type stuff. There's when I when I listened to it, I thought I thought this guy sounds a lot like the lead singer of the Aquabats, and I don't think he intends to. He he does. <laughs> uh, that's that's all the thing I was thinking. I was like, wait, this literally sounds like Charge, except worse. <laughs> I, like that's, 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 that's what, what this whole album he actually sounds like the lead singer of the Aquabats but he does not mean to I yeah. really thought it was the same person that's 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 that's, that's they, when I noticed it it like, got to me I was just like he doesn't realize he's not intending to sound ridiculous the guy the yeah. Aquabats guy he's trying to be like hilarious yeah, but like this guy isn't trying that's just like what he's doing that's just yeah. what his voice does and... yeah and uh so yeah, that's the vocal performance was uh, leaving something to be desired for me, and uh, the uh, lyrics were there were some there were a lot of clever lines, but there's also like times where it seems like, oh, let's put in a clever line that doesn't really relate, just to have the clever line in there, and like you know when Cameron said something about like the chorus and life and earth being good, and I, and I was, and like I did not feel that one because I, that one I. I don't remember what the, the lyrics exactly are, but I remember thinking that the chorus is kind of clunky. I thought it was creative. I thought it was kind so of creative. That song, he said something about, um, the first time I was listening to it, he said something about, like, pull the right trigger and kill someone you'll never meet. And I didn't realize he was talking about Halo. So yeah. I thought he was making, like, a meta commentary on society, like the little things you do can <laughs> no, just, like, was... murk niggas. On the other yeah. side of the planet, I was like, damn. And, and then the second time I listened to it, he was talking about Halo. I was like, damn, that's yeah. a little... Yeah, like, the, the Halo thing is, like, Actually, the Halo thing does relate to the, what the song is trying to be about, but no, it's it's just one of those, it's just like there were certain lines that just felt like, oh, he had something clever that he wrote and he wanted to put it in the song and he put it in the song, but it didn't really feel like it meant. To, and wouldn't was you like, do that if you wrote a song? Like, that's exactly what I, I would do. Yeah. For yeah. That. I mean, I think I, this like, album... that, that's the, that's 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 the Rand's dressing approach to uh, and he's to, repping to song. it. And yeah. he's repping it. Because why would you? Why would you put stuff that you didn't like in a song? Yeah, <laughs> no, I think I think, I think this that. album. No, but I think this album encapsulates something really important about the musical process, which is just it's like it's the soul. You yeah, know, I think he's doing what he he loves. Like it's, he's yeah, doing yeah. it because he wants to. He's not doing it for the mm. 160 and, people and on I'm Spotify. Sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure for him and for the other guys in the band, this this record means a lot to them. I'm and sure me. it does. And and, and, I get, and again for Cruz Delgado, the one guy who ever listened to it. Right. But uh, <laughs> the last name didn't have to go in there, but you know what it is. 
<laughs> yeah, I, pr I did not have to do the good line. But whatever, it doesn't matter. Because uh, you're, you're a radio station host. They, you're, you're a public figure. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I guess I can plug over here. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but, plug? Um, <laughs> I am a radio station host at WSBF FM Clemson. That's You heard it right. 88.1 WSBF FM Clemson. You can go to WSBF.net and listen to me on the radio live. And there's a webcam that goes about four frames a minute. So you can kind of see me there. And uh, I play music that I don't like because I don't have my uh, specialty show yet. But soon. In a year. Soon, TM. Yeah. So, uh... I'd be actually... Like, if... If someone told me, like... When I actually looked it up on Bandcamp and I saw the, the original cover, I did... I do feel like I've seen this somewhere on a chart. So, you know, I guess... Not, someone else has listened to it, but uh, someone's popping off somewhere. But uh, if someone like came up to me and said, "Hey, here's this new album that just came released by this band called Free Parking, that uh is really really good. You should listen to it." I would I would be tempted to try it, even though I did not really like this one because I do see potential. I got triggered when they started a song with Ichi Sanchi. Oh yeah, I, 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 I cringe. I cringe. I cringe. I, cringe. Oh, I love it. I was I love waiting it. for the train. I cringe. I love I, it. Uh, I, I was doing dishes at work and I listened to it and I was yeah, I I heard it and I like I turned my head down and I looked away and someone walked by and said is something wrong and I'm like nothing <laughs> everything is fine <laughs> <laughs> oh but yeah fucking weeaboots <laughs> yeah so as final thoughts I think this is gonna be in my hundred albums list that my uh, roommates are pressuring me into making. Because I don't, I just, I just enjoy it. Like I don't, I don't think it's the best I, album I, ever I, I, made, I but it, it has, I it has love into it, and I, I, I can, I can feel that love. So personally, I like it. This is white boy mildly overweight weeb music, <laughs> and it's not that bad. And if you're, if you're an average YouTube watcher, you're probably. I refuse to believe weekend. that this lead singer is anything but mildly overweight. I'm pretty sure he's skinny. I, I disagree. <laughs> you I mean, disagree. Who knew? <laughs> you disagree. Yeah, who, <laughs> who knew? <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know. We'll never know. You know maybe when they break on Fifty, they can start touring internationally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, one one thing that we didn't even mention. Shout out to the band name because that's a quality yeah, band. Yeah, free, free parking. Everybody, oh, everybody I loves free parking. parking. Like, yeah, just, everybody loves free parking. I have a car. Fuck that shit. Make those niggas pay. Yeah, but if someone picked you up to go somewhere, you would be relieved right. that there was free parking. I, I feel like free parking anywhere near me would just create complications. But except for that one scenario, but I mean, you, you never know. All right. You, you never know. So we have one more. Best for last. What? We say the best for last. For last. We we didn't need save the best for last. So the best album here, the shortest album here, the sweetest album here <laughs> was none other than Famous Crip by the famous Crip himself, Mr. Blueface Baby. Alright. Blueface is a um uh, an up and coming um um rhythm and poet rhythm poet <laughs> I am rhythm, from rhythm poet okay okay um, in RPs you could call him from um the Southern California region um, oh, he's from SoCal okay. he's from like LA somewhere like I don't know LA County type shit I don't know that place is all the same <laughs> um um notable features um he's skinnier than me. He might, he's, he, I believe he's slightly taller than me, and he has a big Benjamin Franklin tattoo on the right side of his face. Okay. That he got as dedication to rapping because fuck doing anything else. He can't get a job now. So he has, <laughs> so he has to be a good rapper, rapper now. He, ha he has to go somewhere with this now. It's like, he forced himself to do it. So... This this album with its um beautiful eighteen minute runtime, 
I, I should say how I found it. I found it on the No Jumper playlist. If any, if any listeners know what that is, then whatever. That's where I found. It. I found the Isn't dead that like most. a Spotify playlist. It's it's a it's a playlist on Spotify. Yeah, yeah, but like, but like I, the actual, first like, song, group. "Dead Loaf," which is the most popular song, um, that that was just chilling there. I listened to that. I, at the first time I listened to it, I was like, "What the fuck is this garbage?" All right. <laughs> Coincidentally, yeah. also but, my experience. <laughs> but then I listened to it again. I was like, "Wait, <laughs> this man is popping off. He's literally talking. He does not care." <laughs> His voice is cracking. Every time he says anything, he does not care. So good. He's blue faced baby. He does not care. All right, like this man is a legend. I listened to the whole rest of the album. I was like, wait, this this album is genius. It is comedic genius, and it is by far the most enjoyable album that has come out this year. All right. Okay. I wait, wait. To the KKB album, so I know I can say that. All right. So, <laughs> who, who would like to start the high praise? Of... Wait, I, I got a question. What? Right. I'm not really done with my monologue. I asked the question. Okay, okay, okay. Is 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 the comedic genius of the album intentional? What do you mean? Is he trying to be funny at all? Listen. I can't. I can't. Before I answer your question, I'm gonna ask you a question. Do you care? <laughs> no, I think it's hilarious, and I, I, I will still think it's hilarious, even if he's not intentionally being hilarious. Okay, well, would you agree that there's the difference between funny and humorous? Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. But I, okay. think this, I think this is actually laugh out loud. I laugh, yeah. I laugh I would agree. out loud multiple times. I would agree time. that this is laugh out loud hilarious, and I did laugh out loud multiple times, but whatever I would say is that there's a difference between trying to be funny and trying to be humorous. This man is certainly trying to be humorous, right? But he's coming off funny. That's the thing. Most people are. He's coming off funny. Like, Lil Pump is trying to be humorous, but he's just trying to have fun. This man takes it, like, a level higher, but he's not necessarily trying to be funny. Because he's taking this seriously. He's trying to make a career out of this, you know? Like, it's not just an absolute joke to him. But, But as you hear... Like he a lot of times because he recycles lyrics like the whole time, which is one yes. of the funniest parts. But <laughs> yeah. one, of, one of the lyrics that he says is, "Y'all niggas been rapping your whole life. I just rap on the weekends." <laughs> th- th- this is to like show that he doesn't like he cares, but he doesn't really care. Like he just does this for fun, but he's still taking it like el- semi seriously. But really, it's just like he just does this to fuck around, and so like I'd say he's trying to be humorous. And like a little funny, but he is taking you seriously at the same time. And for me, I, I honestly prefer the gray area where you really can't tell. And it's yeah. not just like some <laughs> random meme rapper just yeah. doing it like, yes, this is an absolute joke. I really like it when it's like this where it's like, like it's like the mixture, you know? I mean, I, I, I do enjoy that. I did very much enjoy listening to this and thinking and not being sure whether or not he was trying to be outright funny or not. And, uh, I mean, I, I did lean towards thinking that he was actually a serious person. But, yeah. Uh, you you can't that. rap about, like, killing people and, like, bitches licking your testicles that much. Like, <laughs> yeah. at some point, like, you have to be a little stupid. And <laughs> he, he, did, really he, is, he really is a crip from L.A. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to ask that question. I was like, is he like, a real crip? Like, I feel like, yeah, if, he, I feel like it would be another level of joke if he was to defy death by making fun of crib culture. Oh, I thought no. he was literally, like, just if, actually if swagging out. If that were his out. explicit purpose, that would be hilarious, and it would be better than the gray area. But no, nah, he really is, like, a crip from L.A. That just... Oh, the story of how he started rapping, I should say, I told Alex, but he was borrowing someone's car. And that someone was like like a producer slash engineer. And the person whose car he borrowed said, hey, come come to the car, come with the car to this studio so I can get it back from you. Because like that, that's just where he worked. And in the studio, they were just fucking around the studio. And his friend was like, yo, you should try to rap. Just like as some joke shit. He had never rapped in his entire life. All right. So he, he, in his words, he got on the mic and he was just talking. And then he listened to it back and he was like, damn. I really like the way I sound. <laughs> and he decided to become a rapper in that moment. Wait, so it's not even like he went to the... 
So you cut out? Him, yeah, say that again. He, he didn't, like, go to the person and the person, like, discovered him or something. He just he just listened to himself. Yeah. <laughs> it's not... <laughs> that's, that's too good. This, this guy isn't so, real. I refuse to believe he's so, real. I also refuse to believe that he's real. <laughs> so, I was really hoping, because obviously I picked this album, and I knew Alex was going to hate it. <laughs> I figured Jack would think it was hilarious, because I feel yeah. like Jack's that kind of person. I feel like Jack would really receive this. Yeah, and I cool. didn't know how Cruz would receive it. <laughs> Alex thought Cruz would find it funny. Yeah, how could Cruz, Cruz, how do you feel? Uh, so you want me to go through what I feel about... Blue face, baby. <laughs> okay, yeah. so... And, and we, can, we can go... I have a lot to say about this album. So, I, I don't know if this is indicative of my personality or um, of, of the, the culture or the, the feedback loop that I've been enslaved to in my entire life. But the first time I, I listened to this, I was listening to it on the bus. And I was like, okay... It's some rap shit. I hear some, it might be some trap shit. Like I'm hearing, I'm hearing the beats, and then I like I sit down next to this black girl, and I'm and I'm, I start listening to it. And I'm like, oh god no! I hope she doesn't know it. Like doesn't hear any of this. I hope she doesn't hear blue face baby. And, and I I think he, I, I either when when I listen to it, it's a fifty fifty. I either like really love hearing him talk about like. I got two dicks, one for the, one for something who's sucking, like like a like a nigga or something. For a nigga that's sucking. That shit is way too fucking funny. Like it's, I can't actually hold myself in. Like I'm either really laughing or I'm like, this is literally the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Please make it stop. It's either the longest album I've ever listened to in my life or the shortest album. Like it, I, it's a 50 50. It's a fucking I coin need to stress flip. that this album is 18 minutes. I know, but it's so. It's, no, it's, it's, it's 20, 21 minutes it's long. It's so long. Like, if you. if I, When I'm not enjoying it, like, once we once you hit Respect My Crippin' to show up, it's. I can't stand it. I'm like, please go away. Or when I really like it, I'm like, God, this is so fucking great. Like, this is literally the best thing I've listened to. Like, it's. Like, it's so. It's so fucking tossed up. Like,. And I, I'll, I will never listen to this again. Like I, 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 I can't, I can't do it, man. Dude, I, the listening to Thadiana, life I'm gonna blast. Thadiana is just like it's you. Oh my god, it, it's always a toss up. Like it. Oh my god, it's so. Oh my, this album is so fucking weird. <laughs> Who made this? Blue face baby. Blue face baby. God damn it. <laughs> Another thing I generally couldn't tell, well, listen, generally could not tell while listening to this, is whether or not there was only one person rapping. Because some, like... He probably layered his vocals, but can... Oh, I, I mean, think yeah, um, there are definitely on Show Up, up or Put It In Her Face, there was, like, someone else, I think. I think there's, like, one... It song sounded like there was there. Somewhere. But the thing is, the thing is, like, yeah, there's some parts where he layers his vocals, but... There's just like verses where he sounds like he's just like a guy talking, and there's verses where he sound where he has like this is this hyper distinct nasally garbage shit voice, and it's like what the fuck changed? Like I don't, I don't get it. It's like it's it's for for someone whose rapping is basically just them topic talking. He's got a lot of voices. I'm just gonna say that. Yeah, but if he was just doing like some normal like deep boring voice. This would probably be bad. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, I feel like oh, yeah, it would probably be bad then. <laughs> for this to work, everything needs to be there. He needs but, to be cracking his voice. He he's needs to, so like, good. That's the best part is when his voice <laughs> fucking cracks. He doesn't it care. It has to be he these beats. Care. He needs to actually reference the fact that he's talking because he does. That he's just talking. He needs to say, like, the funny shit that he does. Like, it, it all has to be there, and it's all there, and it's fucking... It's so good. God, it's this so album good. is a creative masterpiece. It's so honestly. awful. It's so good. Wait, it's so if... bad. It's good. That's what. That's why I, I like it. Question. That's what it is. Can I ask one question before I weigh my opinion? You know, sure. mix. Why did you? Why did you think I was gonna hate this from the get go? Because you did mention that you you figured that I wasn't gonna like it. I would love to know well, what your thought process there was. Because I listen to rap well, music. Well, why did you? 
Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you don't listen to this. Uh, yeah, you're okay. That's fair. There's a key fundamental. There, I, there is not a key fundamental difference I know of between Gregory Allen Isakov and Gregory and the Hawk. Or, well, there's one between like this and Crywank or like Soko. I don't know what it is if there is one. There's a key fundamental difference between famous Crip and mad villainy. All right. Yeah. I feel like that's all that's, I really have to say. I feel like you really couldn't hit the nail on the head any better there, man. <laughs> there is a key fundamental difference. <laughs> what, what did you think, Jack? Overall, I guess you've you given you given. I, I, want, I want to shout out the particular line where he says, "The bitch said that I'm going to be the next big thing." I said, "Shut up and suck on this big thing." <laughs> <laughs> it, he says it so seriously. There's no There's way he doesn't so laugh. He just no way he doesn't he laugh. So much. <laughs> I got a porn star dick. He, he says he has porn star dick at least twice. He also says he has two dicks. He also says he has, <laughs> he has porn dick. He also says porn dick. Like I get it up like Viagra. I get it wetter like Niagara, which was that. Out that that's the best line of the whole album. Alex is I get it. Laughing out loud. I get her wetter than yeah, like, Niagara like, is also like, just like the gold. two times. The two times I actually laughed out loud during the album were stuck on this big thing and wetter than Niagara. <laughs> So, my my thought on the album, and I'm I'll be I'll be I'll give credit where credit is due, which is none. There's there's no credit. Due. This is this is not only the worst album of 2018 so far. This is one of the worst albums, period, that ever has come out. The beats are. We're beyond garbage. They're the childishly are bad. What I respect about the way you guys are viewing this album <laughs> is as if everything that seems like it's bad or just makes it worse, you're, you're all being like, oh yeah, that's the point. No, 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 no. What, the situation here is that you gave somebody the power to create something that they never should have been able to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, Alex. Alex, you say the thing call. about like it being the point, but I no, do not no. care what he did and did not intend. The what, album what is saying. perfect for the album. Like you, it can, not you can listen to this album all you want and talk about how the experience that you have, the individual person's experience, is this and that. But all I'm, but all I can think about when I listen to this album is integrity. Is that your? I'll horrible... say that blue face. Is that you are a lame zero. white boy that will never be on Blueface's level? Uh, well, and you know, if I will, if I can't be on Blueface's level, well, then that's just the price I pay. Because what I what I have to emphasize is that this is one of the worst things ever made. His the thing is is that if you're gonna do a style of rap like this, where a lot of the emphasis is on, I hesitate to say witty. You know, lines, you know, the humorous, if you will, funny lines, you, the key to that is making them inherently funny. It's, they the are thing, inherently funny. The thing is, harder than the lines themselves though, are inherently funny, funny but the shit would not be, you. like, perfection. Never yeah, argue like with him after he's done talking. Harder right. than Viagra, wetter than Niagara, okay? That's a line that got me. But it's not because I was like, this is, you know, this is the pinnacle of society. This is what they'll remember. It's just, wow, he really, like, he said that. You know? really it's, not, it's not like he's making a joke and I'm like, that's clever. That's a good joke. It's just, wow, I can't believe that that's the line, you know? I can't believe that he has two dicks. It's not okay. that saying I have two dicks is funny. Right, it's, right, it's right, just right. that it's, okay. it's the level of incompetence okay, okay, listen, is listen, so high that listen, I cannot listen. I would argue <laughs> that there is equal value in like, ha ha, this is clever, or ha ha, that's a good joke. And I, ha ha, I can't believe he just said that. Like the shock value. If you, okay, I believe, if you, I you believe have that like one, it's not inherently worse, but this is what you believe. You can have that opinion and that's fine. But I want you to at least admit in that case that the album is not good. It's enjoyable. I don't care. I can, I can, get, good I can, bad. I can get down with no. saying that's it's not good, that's enjoyable. Okay, listen, as listen. long as everybody here at least acknowledges that this album no, is No, this album is bad. good. This album is a masterpiece. <laughs> all right? no, 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 I, no, I will no. say, I no. will say no. that... 
That is album's a masterpiece. This album's yeah. a 10 out of 10. Okay, so hey, this hey, album... This is, this so, is something so... that I have to say just as the closing note for my, my section of this debate. Right. Is that if I have to ask the question, regarding it being funny in humans, if I have to ask this the question, is it funny on purpose? That's that's out the window for me. That means that it's not, it cannot achieve... You have to make it known via your content that you're trying to accomplish what you're actually accomplishing because it's See, the but like i disagree completely i yeah, love the gray area like what, I, what i'm saying is if you do the ski jump in the olympics okay if you tumble all the way down the hill and stick the landing well that might get some people clapping you didn't do a ski jump and that's that's really okay. where this album uh falls so you would say that that would not that would not be a good ski jump, but that would be an enjoyable ski jump. I think I think to some people it would be. I'd say this album is neither good nor enjoyable, personally. Well, I think that this album is a masterpiece. <laughs> it is good. It is enjoyable. It is hilarious. It is humorous. And it you know, is, due, due to the actions of our it, ancestors, you are it, entitled it, to that. It is opinion. Library of Congress worthy. I don't know about and, that. And it is dumpster fire garbage. <laughs> what I will all, say, all at the same time, in thirty years, if somebody cites Blueface as their as their inspiration for starting music, feel free to send me a letter in the mail and tell me you told me so. <laughs> I what what does that matter? What does influence some someone else to make music matter? Like because this album has no value. This album this is album has many much value. It's, it's almost it, an anti album. This album has incredible value in. Enhancing the well-being of my life and decreasing yours, which are the main two things I care about right now. And you know, I'm really glad that you know. I I knew that you wouldn't like the Gregory Allen Isakov album, but I'm glad that you had the same level of scholarly debate that I had about this album for that one. <laughs> I'm glad you gave that album a fair shot, like I did to yours. <laughs> I'm sorry that your album was double the length. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I and you know, would argue that there's also other album. things that are double the length, but you know that's just that's just his <laughs> I, I, my, my, I mean, Blueface's two dicks are also probably four times the length as your one. So. Another another thing that I think is really noteworthy about the album, but I will give it credit for, is that if I ever wanted to seriously get depressed, I think I know what album I would listen to first. <laughs> I'm glad that this album has that effect on you. Uh-huh. And I'm glad that no album I've ever listened to has that effect on me. Today might make me angry, <laughs> but it will not depress me. You know, it's one thing to listen to a 45-minute album, because, you know, it's like, man, that was something. But it's another thing to listen to a 21-minute album and be like, damn, that was a waste of half the time I could have spent listening to a different album. But, you know, we live in a society... Yeah, we, fuck yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. I I love living in a society. And that's and, you know, and I'll say it. That's the price we pay. <laughs> For me, Blueface is pro- is yet another proof that we live in the correct timeline. I don't know. This cult, what else? Like a bunch of other shit. Bill Cosby innocent, <laughs> <laughs> but he wasn't innocent in this timeline. Oh, he, he was indeed. That 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 guilty. Does, that does not matter. The fact that that tweet was made. That's all I need. I'm pretty sure in that's every timeline he makes that tweet. Well then, well what then that's evidence for about? every timeline that that is the correct timeline. Kanye, when the allegations went out for Bill Cosby, said Bill Cosby and <laughs> Bill Cosby innocent. innocent. He tweeted Bill Cosby innocent in all, all caps, caps, all caps, and there are a few <laughs> estimation points I believe. <laughs> Of course it was Kanye. <laughs> I really respect that he stuck by the homie. Through <laughs> thick and thin and through thick and um uh date rape. He uh, he really supported <laughs> the, 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 the true Cruz, I want you to know that this whole game I've been making incorrect roles because I keep looking at your character <laughs> and thinking it's me. <laughs> but uh yeah, I think this album is a. Uh... So bad it's good, but I still hate it. But I, no, I, and then I like it. So it's just like a it, it it's just base by base, you know. One second I can get, like it, some second I can just hate it. For it does me, get an accolade personally for me for being the new lowest rating I've given to an album, <laughs> and probably the lowest rating I could ever give to an album because what, if it, it zero, it's, it's a three because I believe that if I heard a two or a one, I wouldn't be able to actually finish the album. <laughs> so unless Cameron. 
I mean, and I'm, let's be honest, it will be Cameron, unless Cameron <laughs> recommends an album that I'm required to listen to via the, you know, constraints of this podcast. It's unlikely we'll ever reach show. the lower three. So, so congratulations. It's a radio show. show. Yeah, the segment, sorry. But uh, until then, a three is probably the, the, you know, the last barrier I mean, we can break. So, so I mean, not, not to get too off topic, but the, shouldn't, shouldn't, like... The worst album you've ever reviewed on a Mac be a one, and everything be on a scale from that to the whatever you think is. Tennis. No, because no, just, what I'm saying is when, when, you're, I, when you're an infant and you hear one album, you could think that thing was garbage and put it at a one, but that doesn't mean it's a one, really. What I do when I want my rating process is based on what it is is that I have to listen to the whole album in order to want to like in order to give it an accurate rating. All right. And I think that this album is better than an album I wouldn't be able to finish. And okay. so I believe that only an album that I, the only way I could give something a one is if I was able to get through it and it was still so bad that I could, that I, it was, it would, it would alter my chemical makeup. <laughs> and I, think I, don't think album, I, I think you said that this album did alter your chemical makeup. And I don't think that I would be able to get through an album that could do such a thing. But so you I, say I, a lot I, of so albums three, alter your chemical makeup. So three is pretty much as bad as it gets. It may be a two, depending on if it just comes out of nowhere and it's garbage. But I All think right, I think it's safe to say that it's only Cameron that could ever get me there. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to see about that in future episodes of the WLTM, WLTM FM FM radio segment on the internet. Uh, well, we listen to music, so you don't have that to. we like. So you don't have to. Uh, we'll see you next thank week. You. Thank you for listening. <laughs> see ya.